Welcome back to Turner Fishing. This is Stephen Turner. So on today's video, we're going to be going over the top three things that you can improve on to put more fish, bigger fish into your boat 365 days a year. Unless you live up north, I don't mess with no ice down here in the south. So over the course of the three years of doing YouTube, I've had the ample opportunity to go out with probably over 150 of you guys out there. You know, we went out, dialed in your live scope, dialed in your side scan, uh, shown you what a fish looked like, and even had the opportunity to catch a bunch with you. You know, just certain things that people do that they could just improve on. Now, I'm not calling out anybody that you ever went fishing with me or if I've ever went fishing with you. I'm not calling you out, but I'm just trying to help other people out as I've helped y'all. So in today's video, we're gonna go over the top three ways, three ways, three things, that I see people do that they can improve on that can make them a much better angler and get out there and put more fish in their boat, which is the idea of this channel. I wanna help you catch fish. So if you wanna, if you wanna catch fish and wanna help me, hit that red button right there. And if you need your electronics dialed in, shoot me a message at crappymanjigs at gmail.com and we can get set up um, I, I can only do local. I don't trust my truck to make it to Walmart down the street. So if you're any further than Lake Murray, I can't help you out. <laughs> but if you are around Lake Murray or willing to travel down here, I can get forward, forward facing sonar dialed in, side scan, down scan. We can go find some brush piles, catch a couple fish. Shoot me a message, guys. But let's get into today's video, and I hope you enjoy it. So we're going to kick this video off with number three. It's gonna be the most controversial thing about the whole video, you know. Take this with a grain of salt, this is my opinion. And if, you know, if you have your own opinion, that's cool for you, drop it down in the comments below. But number three reason, we're gonna go from three to one, reasons why you're not putting more limits in your boat when you go out. Honestly, the way you tie your jig and the profile of your jig listen guys I'm gonna explain this in a weird way but it just makes sense so everybody out there you know you go to a Christmas party Thanksgiving dinner a birthday party a baby shower um, a work meeting or something and you know you get there early you're talking with your family your friends whatnot you know people's got little smokies in the crock pot over here some swedish meatballs over here which are freaking delicious you've got a fruit tray over here you've got a tray with cucumbers olives little pickles carrots etc you've got a tray of pimento cheese sandwiches all cut up in little cute triangles and everybody's just standing around waiting on, you know, the mac and cheese to get brown, the turkey to be done in the oven. So, let me, let me ask. If you're standing around running your mouth with your family, shooting the, shooting the breeze, shooting the breeze, guys, what item are you going to eat while you're sitting there? I'll give you a second to think on it. Are you going to go get a little plate fill it up with little smokies or little Swedish meatballs and start eating them or are you gonna go grab that black olive green olive or that that carrot and just munch on it while you're running your mouth exactly so that's why you know here at Crappy Man Jigs we sell 90% finesse baits you know 1.5 inch to 2 inch is the majority of our baits so if you're going out there with a 3 inch Bobby Garland jig uh, 3.5 inch jig a 2.5 inch jig you know you may catch the one to two fish off that brush pile that's wanting to bite but in order to pull more fish off a brush pile think of it like you're waiting on the turkey to come out the oven you're more inclined to grab something small and snack on it than you are to indulge into a full meal even the reverse effect after you're done eating you throw your plate in the trash you know you're about to pop you want to go take a nap but if you're still in the kitchen around the food talking you're gonna grab a carrot you're gonna grab an olive just to eat something 
And that's where little finesse jigs come in to getting more limits in your boat. The smaller profile is going to equal more bites because it's going to be an easier opportunity for that fish to not exert as much energy in order to get more fish in your boat. Now another thing, if you're using a Palomar knot, a clinch knot, or just any regular knot that isn't a loop knot, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage because if you bump into the brush, your knot moves on your jig head. And when it moves, your jig looks unnatural. That's why 100% of the time, I don't care if I'm using my 13 foot ACC Krabby Stick or my five foot ACC, I'm gonna be running a loop knot because it doesn't matter what column, it doesn't matter if I throw it into the bridge, it doesn't matter if I hit the dock, I know my jig is presented in the 100% best way that I possibly can on each cast. And that makes up a lot of time when you're spending days upon days out there catching these limits is I want to spend less time doing it, but I want to have the best odds of catching a limit. So we're gonna go down the little totem pole. Why you're not getting these fish in your boat. You know, like I said at the beginning of the video, 90% of the time, if I hit that water, I'm gonna get a limit unless I'm not trying to. Number two is quite the opposite of profile and all that. Time on the water. If you're just now getting into crappy fishing and you're upset that you can't go out there and catch five to 20 fish per trip, just take a minute and I'm gonna call you out. This is a no bull crap video. I'm not here to babysit you. How many spots did you actually try to fish? If you say one or two, that's probably why. Let me explain. You know, you may be like, well, what do you mean? In your videos, you catch like 10 off one brush pile. That is correct. But there's also a lot of videos where I'm every fish almost is on a different spot or a different angle of the brush. Time on the water, and what I mean by that is you need other places to fish other than the ones you steal from my videos, just saying. But if you get out there, say I'm on my home body of Lake, Lake Murray. If I put in anywhere in that lake, except, you know, the lakes is inside, because I really don't fish over there much, I have a topographic memory in my head of at least 300 to 500 brush piles, at least 20 or 40 docks and I go through the list. In my head, I'm like, well, there's a brush pile over there. You know, I found it three years ago. Let's go check if it's still there. And boom, they're there. But there's, you know, they're stacked on it, but I'm only gonna catch two fish off of it. I catch those two fish, I waste 15 minutes trying to catch more. In my head, I'm like, man, I got to go. And that's one of the hardest things to do, especially with forward facing sonar, is you see these fish and they will not bite. But you gotta just, hey man, they just ain't eating. So you go to the next pile. They ain't nothing on that. You go to the, the dock. They ain't nothing on this dock. You go to the next pile and boom, they're stacked. You catch five or six off that one. Then they cut off, don't want to bite. Time on the water, what I mean by that is you need other places to just go through a list. If you get bit on a 15 foot brush pile, how many other 15 foot brush piles do you have to go hit? because the faster you hit these brush piles, the faster you got a limit in the boat. So time on the water, taking time to side scan for brush piles, taking time to use your 2D sonar to find brush piles, however you find brush piles, take the time to go find them. And then put more fish in your boat. Number one, and lo and behold, it's one of the most simple things, but as somebody that I, I've been on hundreds of boats in the past two years, helping guys catch fish and just having a good old time meeting friends is patience. I patiently just put a no audio right there just to emphasize patience or 
because for a long time it never clicked in my head because mentally growing up with the crappy man this is how I was taught to fish now somebody that's new to fishing they're not going to understand but what y'all don't see on the videos most of the time unless I'm doing a raw video is the amount of time per cast that I actually use now in the background of this video hopefully I can find some old footage or something that I'm gonna try to speed up and actually show you a full cast when it's tough now there are days where one cast can equal 20 seconds you got a fish but there are a lot of days especially in the winter time when you're fishing docks and brush piles open water fishing with live scope you you ain't got to worry about none of this but when you're actually fishing a dock and the fish are up under the dock are you fishing a brush pile and the fish are in the brush pile you want to vertically jig over or beside the dock some cast can last up to five minutes and I'm not kidding until something comes out of that brush pile and eats or something comes out from under that dock and eats you gotta have patience don't give up don't throw out there wait a little bit wind it in throw out there wait a little bit wind it in if your lines in the water you're fishing if you know the fish are there you found them on whatever electronics you got because it don't matter I don't care if you got a $90 hummingbird from Walmart or you got a, a 12 inch Garmin with the, the new G3 2 live scope transducer have some patience crappy will bite as you sit there if you just hold your rod you give that jig enough action they will come out and bite so that about wraps it up the top three reasons that I see as I take people out to teach them electronics to teach them how to catch a fish with our jigs is number three use a loop knot downsize your jig throw a little minnow I promise you they will buy it number two take some time to learn your electronics take some time to learn your lake and definitely take some time to go out there and mark all of them luscious brush piles and number one once you find the fish have the patience to catch them I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you want to learn how to tie a loop knot I suggest you check out the, this video right up here and I will catch y'all on the next one